glad I put my personal protective equipment on because she still has R12 in her. How? It's a closed system, and it's held pressure all these years. Okay, a couple of things. I can't work when it's crowded, so I had to move Ivy out. This thing still has R12 in it. That was what I was trying to say earlier. Wow, okay. It's a bigger molecule, so maybe I shouldn't be too surprised, but it's been, you know, 13, 17 years. So the other thing is, I lost Ivy down the driveway, and you can see my non-ABS skid marks in the rocks as I desperately tried to get her to not roll away from me as it hopped over the wood. It was silly on my part the way it all happened. But with a little bit of swearing and my water breathing technique, I was able to stop the car from going anywhere dangerous. It just sort of rolled halfway up that driveway and then I did the thing where I collected myself, turned the wheels, pushed it back up here, pushed it back that way, got a little bit further up that driveway, seesawed it all the way up to approximately not very far on my driveway, and then proceeded to take no chances and ratchet strap it every time I would just sort of bounce it and then kick the wood and bounce it and kick the wood and bounce it and kick the wood. Eventually we're there. All right, so this is a big pond tarp. It's like a, oh, I don't know. It's about half the thickness of a sidewall on a tire. So there's that. And that's protecting the freshly power wash driveway. I'm gonna also add some tarps down there because all the oil and stuff that's about to fall out from the bottom of this thing with the power washing is going to stick to this nice baby naked concrete and it will definitely make some black spots on it the same way that hauling engine parts will do. So uh, just a precaution to protect the driveway. I'm still catching my breath. My heart's settling down from that uh, excitement there, but uh, I'm gonna jack it up. I'm gonna leave these straps on just in case she decides to make a getaway, but I think those steelies and the wood and the jacks and the rubber and everything should hold it nicely. And I could just kind of be a little more incognito with that thing hiding me because the neighborhood mailbox is there and I don't like people asking questions because while there's no HOA, there's definitely the city that complains about things like cars with no license plates. So I'm gonna behave and try to be quick, but let me show you once we get it up, just how dirty it is under there. Swedish proverb 36, the handbrake is stronger than the human brake. the way the cookie crumbled. <laughs> I got so close to finishing too. This is actually a lot of fun. I just worry about the noise. You know, this is the kind of town where I got woken up because somebody was knocking on their door at night. Gotta do a rinse, because it really made a mess. Wow, I thought that was good coverage, uh-uh. This event actually reminds me of Swedish proverb number 12. Caution, hot. A people of few words.
thing happened that I guess shouldn't be too surprised because it does occur frequently, and that's the sunset. So now the car's gonna dry off. I'll roll it back into the garage. The war against dirt is slowly but surely being won, one battle at a time. I'll see you in the morning when I can show you just how it looks underneath. Mm. The short answer is not great, but better. Remember this guy? There we go. So my buddy Lucas hired me to get the transmission out of this. It's got an M47 and only one fog light. And that's because the only reason I agreed to it is because I feel bad that the transmission in the wagon that I sold him failed, not because the trans was bad, but because it overheated when the fan that I got from, well, this junkyard uh, stopped working and then the car overheated. So it kind of boiled the fluid and it was on its last leg, I guess, because that did it. And this is everything you need for a trans swap. The pedal box assembly, which has bolts both on the bottom and on the top and a little bit of glue, which makes it a little stubborn to get out. The drive shaft, mostly just the half shaft, but I pulled the whole thing, it's only 20 bucks. The trans mount and Last but not least, the M47 itself with the shifter, just a couple of the accoutrements, like the uh, clutch pedal cable, which you do want to get a new cable, but it has this big hefty weight on it. So make sure you grab one of those. I grabbed the carrier just in case it's a size for that, but it seems like it's pretty straightforward. Also the most important thing in this entire job, you need tools. It's awful without the right tools. Believe you me, I don't have the right tools today. And it was awful. There's the LO240 that I was hoping to get the rear view mirror out of it today, but it's funny how it's crushing the car below it, but the car above it is not crushing it. I mean, the car below it's got twice the weight, but these Volvos can really take some weight. Went to the junkyard today, hung out with Nikki Bobby, and while I didn't find the tools that I left in the other 164, it was a good excuse to go shopping. Well, on this pretty dreadfully windy day, Amy's gutted. But I haven't shown you the other side of the Ivy yet with the power washing, so I think this is a good opportunity to do that. She's front and center here, ready for the interior to be swapped in and all reassembled. But let's have a look. Tell me, how did we do with our power washer? This is a pretty fine example of the layers of mud and oil. And here is the line of the wash. It didn't strip off the undercoating, which is good. Oh boy, that's all gonna need some sealing before it starts to rust. Uh, here's a pretty good example of more of that. And it looks like as the sun was setting on my pressure wash, I couldn't see very well, but it seems I got the bulk of it on the flat sides. And then all those carvings, exactly the spots where I hit it, kind of weird spots. You know, you start carving like one inch at a time like that, and then it can take a very, very, very long time. But I think I got the majority of it. I'm going to be pulling the control arms, pulling the shocks, leaving the cross member in place. So I was more concerned about the cross member than anything else there. Not much on the rear end in terms of mud to remove, but I did give everything a once over. And the passenger side, this was the dirtier side of the two. There's a pretty good idea of the carving that the pressure washer was doing. There's a look at the back side of the cross member. One of the more important bits for me was the rear differential. And it's improved, but still very rough. Uh, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is as I pull these arms out to replace the bushings, like that one there, and really very simple mountings on these cross members. There's the trailing arms, and then it seems to be one pan hard bar, and then a trailing rod, and I like that. Shouldn't be too complicated, but as I do that, I'll be able to take those pieces, lay them out on the rocks or something, and then just wash them really good. The hood turned out okay. I think a simple wash and wax will help bring out a lot of shine. I'm actually really glad to see the original green had some shine to it. And the cross member, who knew <laughs> it was gray? Uh, kind of that bluish grayish primer color. I like it. A very common spot for water and mud, debris, oil, dust, anything to get trapped is right over yonder in these little cups. 
Same thing happened on the one series cars. If you've got those, if you've got one of these, just have a look, make sure there's not stuff threatening the damage from the inside out. Okay, so you'll see this has no AC compressor. Uh, the Yorks are not really popular. It seems people do remove them a lot. I've mentioned many times in the past that the York AC compressor robs about 20 horsepower from your car. This will be a better example to show you here. Haha, <laughs> allegedly. There's the compressor. As Amy still has pressure and R12 molecules in her, I have to leave this system connected, but ideally a, mo a more modern compressor with adapted fittings would be the better approach. What I like to do for Ivy is have all the pieces ready. You know, see over there is the uh, evaporator with the blower motor. That's the whole control box for the air conditioning unit. It is separate from the heater with its own blower up top. So what I would like to do for that one is have it all set up and ready to go. All we have to do is just get a compressor, have the lines made at the end to fit and everything. And then it will be a really straightforward process to have air conditioning because I would really like to, to do that. This harness here, these go from the fuse panel and it's actually very exciting to me because um, this is the remote harness, which then sends your fuses over here to the left side of the cross member. And the reason, there's still two wires that I need to find out where they go, but that fuse block is actually a much, it's a pretty desirable thing for me. And what it does actually is it allows you not only just to have your air conditioning unit here, but it allows you to have this storage box in the middle because essentially behind the box would be your fuse panel and that would be too much to remove every time you want to get access to your fuses. The 72 only year, I think, is the one that used this cubby and I quite like this. I'm gonna mock it up just to see how it looks, but this would be a great addition to the car because I like the wood grain a lot. I'll bet you that's an ashtray. Everybody smoked in the 70s, didn't they? And then I'll be putting in uh, hopefully a tachometer. This was originally a clock. This would be, I think, like the hazard switch, or there was a, there were several options for how this was all set up. Um, I think an overdrive switch could work here. That could be an indicator light. Could also be a brake light or a seatbelt light. I think the seatbelt buzzer. Um, I don't know what these two are. One of them is green. What does green usually mean? It's like red and green, and uh, I'll figure that all out. You guys will chime in in the comments, I'm sure, but it's going to be a pretty good day to day like it was yesterday. I had such a great time yesterday. Uh, I hope that putting it back together is not gonna be too much of a hassle, but honestly, I love the simplicity of the 140 cars. It's a little more put together than the 122s, and by that I mean they've started putting distinct connectors in here, but in terms of how everything is routed and connected, it's still very much 122 technology. So this is really great, and it's not as plastic or complicated inside like a 240 is. I pulled a pedal box assembly when I was getting the transmission five-speed swap for Lucas's 93 245, my former white wagon. And that had so much plastic behind the dash above the pedal box for the HVAC system. And I was just ripping it out because it's a junkyard car and nobody's going after the plastics because you don't usually need those on the 240s. But it was just so much in there. This is very simple. It's just two hoses from this side of the unit, two on the other side, and then the entire plastic lower half, which is the uh, AC unit. It's not all hidden away. There's no vacuum valves. Everything's manual. Three cables running the whole thing. And now I'm just rambling, but this is my appreciation post for Volvo. And if y'all are still with me on it, um, give it a thumbs up because it's just, I love the simplicity of these cars. They rule. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,